Soda is an example of a solution with a gas dissolved in a liquid, carbon dioxide dissolved in water. Most liquids actually contain a significant amount of dissolved air. Uh, lake water, ocean water contains dissolved oxygen, and that's how fish can breathe. It's necessary for their survival. Our blood contains dissolved gases, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide. In fact, one of the functions of our blood is to carry oxygen and carbon dioxide back and forth to our cell tissues. Even tap water has dissolved atmospheric gases, dissolved air in it. The solubility of gases in water also depends on temperature, but it's the opposite. Whereas solids dissolve more at high temperatures, gases dissolve less at high temperature. Here we see a picture of cold soda being poured into a cup and warm soda being poured into a cup. And you've probably recognized this. If you pour warm soda, it fizzes and bubbles a lot more than cold soda does. That fizzing that you see is the carbon dioxide coming out of solution. If you take two identical glasses of soda, one is warm and one is cold, or you take the two and you leave one on the counter and stick one in the refrigerator where it's cold and come back, I don't know, 12 hours later, the cold one will have more fizz left than the warm one. Warm soda goes flat faster because the solubility of the carbon dioxide is less at that lower temperature. You can try this one at home, too. Just put some ordinary tap water in a pan on the stove and begin to heat it. Before it gets to the boiling point, you're going to see little tiny bubbles of dissolved air come out of solution. This is not boiling. This is dissolved air coming out of solution. If you continue to heat it, then you'll see large bubbles, which are bubbles of gaseous water coming out. Um, the solubility of gases also depends on the pressure of that gas. There's a law called Henry's Law. We're not going to do any calculations with it, but I'm just going to tell you about it. Henry's Law says that the higher the pressure of a gas above a liquid, the more soluble the gas is in that liquid. So here we have illustrations. Here we have a low pressure of gas above the liquid, and over here we have a high pressure of gas. And this comes down to equilibrium. If there is a high concentration, I'm sorry, that's the low concentration. If there's a high concentration of gas up here, then the rate at which it dissolves in the water will increase. If there's a low concentration, the rate at which the gas dissolves in the water will be low. Down here, we have dissolved gases escaping. This is a much like the evaporation process that we talked about in Chapter 15. Gases leaving solution, gases leaving solution. When there's a higher pressure of the gas above the liquid, you'll have more gas in the liquid because of the equilibrium process. So this is why, I guess here's the can of soda. In a can of soda or a bottle of soda, there's always a little bit of gas above it. You'll never find um, a soda container that's full all the way to the top. It won't, it won't keep its fizz very well that way. There's a, great, there's a pressure of CO2 here, and that forces carbon dioxide to be in solution. It increases the solubility. When you open that lid, then you release the pressure, the solubility decreases, and the carbon dioxide begins to bubble out of solution. I have seen advertised on television in the past, not recently because I don't watch TV anymore because I don't have time. It really sucks. But anyway, they used to sell this thing that you could put on your two-liter bottle of soda, and you could just squeeze it and pressurize the bottle again. Well, you're pressurizing your bottle, yeah, but with air. The percentage of carbon dioxide in air is very small. I think it's like 0.6%. 
To increase the solubility of the carbon dioxide, you have to have a significant pressure of carbon dioxide. Pressurizing it with air will only cause some air to get dissolved in your soda, and that's not going to help you out very much. So those devices really did not work. If you pressurize the bottle with carbon dioxide, maybe you rig up something from your um, pellet gun or something, yeah, you could get your soda to be fizzy again. And that, I think, is the idea behind the soda stream, right? You mix the liquid, you dilute the liquid, and then it's got pressurized CO2, and you carbonate the water right there. 